eyes. I open my eyes to see the spiritual truth today. And now over your ears, I open my ears to hear the spiritual truth today. Now you just put your hand over your heart <clears throat> and open your arms. I open my heart to receive the spiritual truth today. The spiritual truth that I'm working with today is that the same mind that is in Christ Jesus is in your mind right now. The same mind that is in Christ Jesus is in your mind right now. That's the legacy of Jesus. See, we were never meant to elevate him. We were always meant to emulate him. And when we begin to look at his life in a way that we can say, how did he do this? What can we do to be able to understand better the Christ conscious? You know that the Bible tells us that before Jesus was born, an angel came to his mother and said, Behold, you are going to give birth to the Christ child. My belief is that every one of our mothers had an angel that came to them that said, Behold, you are going to give birth to the Christ child. Some of our mothers heard it and some of our mothers could not hear it, but it doesn't change the truth of your being. You are the Christ. See, the, the difference between, here's what Christ means. It means anointed one. You are an anointed one. Jesus was an anointed one, meaning that he had a direct hookup to divine mind. He had a direct hookup. You have a, divine, a direct hookup divine mind as well. The difference between most of us and Jesus was that he never turned off the hookup. He never ignored it. He always kept the channel open so that he could get downloaded that which he needed. Jesus had a light that burned so bright that it is still illuminating the world 2,000 years later but I get ahead of myself. This, uh, this holiday is about the birth of a baby. This man had done nothing yet. All he did was lie in a manger and coo at people. That's it. He hadn't done anything yet for us to have a big light around him. His birth is the birth of promise. The birth of the promise of the Christ. This holiday is the promise of the birth of the Christ consciousness that is within each and every one of us. That's the reason for the season. The reason for the season is the birth of promise. See, Jesus saw in you the consciousness. I see in you the Christ consciousness. Our work is to begin to see it in ourselves and in one another. But before I do, I want to ask Reverend Betsy to come up and, and bless our altar. Sure. Hail Mary, full of grace, our Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Betsy. <clears throat> so how do we get this Christ consciousness? H how do we become more a brighter light in our life? We do the work. We do the work to get the Christ consciousness. We have to leave our spiritual crib and move into a more adult way of looking at the world. Now, if you're new and you hear me say, well, we all need to develop our sense of the Christ consciousness, maybe you're saying, I don't even know what she means, Christ consciousness. I don't even, what is that? Here's what it is. It's a state of mind of someone who has a direct hookup and is willing to live their life in harmony with spiritual principles and spiritual teachings. That's what Christ consciousness is. It's a person who is willing to live their life in harmony with the teachings, spiritual teachings and spiritual principles. 
all of the time. Did I say that all of the time? See, because most of us are willing to live it while it's convenient, if it works for us. But those who have the consciousness of the Christ live with it all of the time. For instance, take the principle of cause and effect. See, if it were me and I were writing the science of mind, I would have flipped it around and I would have said effect and cause. Because if we stop fighting this, if we are willing to look at the understanding that every effect in our life has a cause, every effect in our life has a cause. And if we would begin to look at that, what is the cause? It's only one thing. It's thought. All effect comes from thought. So if we are willing to stop fighting this idea of cause and effect and begin to look at our life and say, what is the cause of my particular effects that I want to shift in my life? We would be walking with a Christ consciousness. We may not like it, but we would be willing to, to do it in our life. See, the people with Christ consciousness, they don't fight this notion that every effect in their life has a cause. They don't try and argue with it. They don't try and reason with it. They just know it to be true. They know the spiritual principle is true in their life. In fact, people who are with the Christ consciousness don't even try and tweak the effect. They simply replace it. They say, I need a new thought to go in here. I'm not going to fool with it. I'm not going to try and manipulate it. I'm not going to try and change it. I'm going to replace it with an entire new thought. See, Jesus didn't argue <coughs> or blame the, the family who didn't order enough wine for the wedding. He just went out and made more wine. He didn't argue or blame the blind man for being blind and saying, well, if you'd eat more nutritiously, you probably would have. No, he didn't do any of that. He thought thoughts of wholeness and restored. You see what I'm saying? We need to replace these thoughts of cause to get a new effect in our world. Many people who walk the world with the consciousness uh, of, of the Christ understand what Jesus was teaching when he said, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. And what he was saying is that I'm not, he wasn't saying I'm not human. He was saying that my source, the source of all of my good, comes from the divinity that I have at my disposal. It comes from heavenly sources, not worldly sources. Our jobs are not our source of our finances. God is the source of of our finances. Our spouse is not the source of our love. God is the source of our love. Those are a job, the spouse, those are demonstrations of the truth that is inside of us. Well, once we get a notion that the source is heavenly and it's eternal and it's unlimited, we begin to let go and let God. Those of us in recovery, we tell ourselves that all the time. Let go and let God. Because we know that we can't manipulate the outside. We can only change cause from the inside. People who walk with the Christ consciousness and who have let go understand the teachings of Jesus in the Gospel of Thomas from the Dead Scrolls, recently found, in which he says... That in, <laughs> if you bring forth that which is within you, it will save you. But if you do not bring forth that which is within you, it will destroy you. See, people with a Christ consciousness, they study on that. They know exactly what that means. If you will bring forth that which is within you, it will save you. And if you do not bring it forth, it will destroy you. Well, here's the problem. How, how do I know what's within me? How do I know? In fact, Reverend Georgia, if I were to be honest, some of what's within me is anything but the Christ consciousness. Okay? I'm asking us to go deeper than the experiences. I'm asking us to go deep into that which was 
put in you when you came onto the planet. Now I'm going to talk about six, six attributes of the heavenly source that we need to let out onto the planet in order to save us. But there are many, many more than these six. And they're not in any particular order. They were just in what came to me in a meditation. But there are many, many more than this. But I'm going to start with six. People who walk with a Christ consciousness understand that they have peace inside of them. And when you understand that you have peace inside of you, and you set an intention every morning to let it come out of you. See, don't come in here on Sunday and listen to a good song and listen to me say a couple of words and think you're done for the week. You're not done for the week. You're just starting for the week. you got to set an intention to say every morning, I have peace inside of me, and I'm going to let it come out today. And when you do that, your life will change. You know, holiday time is a time in which we often are, 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 are um, irksome situations with our family members are more poignant during that time. But when we have peace inside of ourselves, we're much more easily able to let that be. When we have peace, so I know some families who are having difficulty with their young children trying to deal with custody issues around the holidays. Who has what child, what holiday? And it's very painful. But if you will develop peace inside of you, you can transform those conversations Hallelujah. to a different conversation, a different sense of energy. You have the peace. The people with Christ consciousness walk in that peace. But you have to let it out. You have to, how do you know if you have peace? How do you know when you're peaceful? You're more calm. You're calmer. You're not reacting. You're responding. You're not spending all day in judgment. I, I, sometimes, I, some, I sometimes wonder how I would spend my day if I spent no time judging anything. <laughs> what would I use my brain to think about? You know, Because it would be quite filled with opportunities for me to solve big things if I wanted to. Ask yourself to salute the Lord Jesus by saying, you know what, I'm not going to judge. I'm going to set the intention not to judge. And I'm gonna, at least I'm going to start noticing when I'm in judgment. First thing is peace. Second thing people have in, inside of us, we all do, is the power. You have enormous power inside of you. And we need to let it out. When we could begin to even get a glimpse of the power inside of us, we would have enough steam to do anything we wanted to do on the planet. We wouldn't even know what words like overwhelm mean. Because we'd be drawing not from our ego selves, but from the power that is within us, that was planted in every single one of us. People who have the Christ consciousness and who know they have the power, they are not whiners. They are not people who walk around talking about being victims. They're people who want walk around and understand that whatever life throws at them, they understand it's both purposeful and transitional. It's not going to stay around forever. It's purposeful and it's transitional. That's what the people with Christ consciousness can begin to understand. I, I'm, I'm beginning to try and work with this power within me. You know, every week I get a phrase that I try and use as my contemplation phrase for the week. And the phrase that I've been working with this week is that I, I, it, is what I look, it is not what I look for in my life, but what I look from in my life. It's not what I look for in my life, but it's what I look from in my life. So if I'm looking for a happier situation somewhere, I look from that state. Not for it. I'm not asking anybody else to do it. Because I have the power inside of me in order to be able to activate that situation. The third one is generosity. All of you have tremendous generosity within you. And when we let it out, our joy abounds. You know how good it feels to give somebody a gift? that they really wanted or that they really didn't know they wanted and you gave it to them and they appreciated it so much? Well, the greatest gift you can give this season or any season is yourself. 
It's who you are. That's what we want to ask people to give. We're so, I'm so grateful that, you know, God worked through Jonah's song to end polio because he gave of himself that which was within him. He let it out. I'm so grateful that God decided to, uh, that Martin Luther King decided to allow to come out his courage and his vision. He allowed that to come out. Our band allows to come out their vision of music and they bring us so much joy. There are mothers and fathers in the church this morning who bring joy just with a listening ear. Just with a listening ear. And sometimes we're called to stand up and give ourselves to others even when it's not convenient and even when we think we can't. I want to read a story. I read it a lot on Christmas, so maybe of you have heard it. It starts out, it's just written by one of my favorite sacred authors called Robert Fulgham. And Robert Fulgham um, <clears throat> was a minister. And one Christmas Eve, he got it in his head that he was going to do a great finale to his sermon by hiring a juggler to come. And he thought that would be fabulous. Well, the problem was that on the way to the church, the juggler's car is stolen. And all of his juggling things are stolen with it. And so he gets there to the back of the church. And Robert Fulgham is where I am right now, trying to give a, a little message. And, and the juggler's back there waving his arms crazy. And, and Robert Fulgham has no idea what he's talking about. So he just goes on. And then in a moment, he introduces the juggler to come out. Uh, but I have to find the juggler again. Okay, the juggler stepped from the light out of the congregation. Slim young man, the wiry athletic kind, black tennis shoes, jeans, green turtleneck shirt, solemn expression and freckles on his face in place of the expected makeup. Longish brown hair, nothing special to look at and no tools of his trade. He smiled and then began his routine. In fact, he went through the entire routine just as if he brought balls and clubs and knives and scarves with him. We had, not seen en we had all seen enough juggling to know he was what was going on. In each part of the routine, he went one step farther than he had ever juggled and, it went, and what we had ever seen. Seven balls is supposed to be the limit for the very best ju juggler. Our guy did eight. <laughs> and we knew it and when he did it and applauded the moment of triumph. On, the <coughs> uh, on through 12 silk scarves in the air at once and seven knives. And we even knew when he... His torches caught on fire, and he caught eight torches in the air all at once and caught them without burning himself. We laughed and shouted encouragement and applauded the remarkable performance. We couldn't see it, but we believed it. We gave him a standing ovation. Then he called for quiet. He wasn't through. He was going to do an encore. He started juggling things we couldn't quite recognize. What's this? Chickens? Birds? Some kind of tree? Rings? One off each finger, five, five gold rings, got it. The 12 days of Christmas. He was going to juggle one of everything in the 12 days. The partridge, the pear tree, and all the rest. Impossible, but he was doing it. A swan, a goose, and an egg. I was thinking he'll never get the maid and the cow off the ground. <laughs> but with a great heaving effort, he did it. After that, the leaping lady and the dancing lord and the drum and the drummer were a piece of cake. Every gift was in the air, way, way up in the air. Because of this, uh, was a lot of, this was a lot of stuff. And as each piece came to the ground, we knew it was what it was and shouted its name and caught it and threw it back into the air again. Fantastic. Nothing like this had ever been seen before. <laughs> That's a beautiful story. See, sometimes we have to take that generosity that is within us and step out, even in the scarier moments, even in the moments of, I don't know if this will work, but this is what they expect and this is what I came here to give. The next thing that the person with a Christ consciousness <coughs> walks with is joy. Joy. Now, I'm not talking about happiness here. There are some people who are naturally happy and they spread joy everywhere they go. There are others who are more melancholy. 
<coughs> and they don't spread joy wherever they go until they start working at it. And you and I have to work at it, and we can. <coughs> there is a wonderful minister named um, Rick Warren, who is a Christian minister who wrote The Purpose Driven Life. Thank you, Brenda. <coughs> and he, his, his son committed suicide recently. And uh, he said the joy has gone out of his heart. So sometimes those people that we think are naturally melancholy aren't melancholy naturally at all. Their melancholy is a result of an incident. And we have to spread the joy while they take time to prepare themselves to step back into a joy-filled experience. But here's what he says is the new definition of joy for him. And I like this definition so much because anybody can do this if we are willing to make it a focus in our life. He says, joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all of the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. That's what joy is. And if we would work toward that kind of joy, that kind of joy of recognizing and praising like the song says that God in every area of our life. We will have a whole different experience. But remember, it's not just to get joy in. Remember the teaching of Jesus that what we keep within us will destroy us. We have to spread this joy out. Now, you notice that I've been using the word Christ consciousness. Consciousness simply means awake. Christ means anointed one. Consciousness means awake. Our work is to become awake to these concepts and to what these teachings that we have. The, the next one is love. Last one. Jesus' ministry was all about love. You know, he was less concerned with the scriptural um, letter of the law than he was with the intent, the loving intent of the law. And here's the thing about Jesus. And I loved our sacred reading, and I'm so glad you loved it too, because I was a little nervous about it, so thank you. Um, here's the thing about Jesus. He was inclusive. He was not exclusive. He didn't exclude anybody from his love. And that's the benchmark that we're looking for, for people of the Christ consciousness. They know all the stuff is story. See, when Peter betrayed him, Jesus had a Christ consciousness, and he knew, oh, Peter's story is up. And he's acting out of his story. That's not who Peter is. And be sure and tell Peter, he said after his resurrection, to come and join me. He loved the tax collectors, the most hated people in all the land during his time, but he loved them. Jesus was a person who loved without reservation. Now, the, probably the most important thing I'm going to say all day is this. Everything in our life is motivated by love. Everything in our life is motivated by love. Either we are expressing love in a positive way by sharing our time, talent, or our treasure, or we are calling for love. Every time we gossip about per somebody, all we're really saying is, please love me, I'm better than they are. Every time we blame somebody for somebody else, see, please love me, they made me make the mistake. Everything in our experience is motivated by love. I invite you this week, you know, we all do stuff we kind of cringe and hope nobody noticed. Oh, God, I, ooh, that's a so. See, the next time that happens to you, ask yourself, where was I looking for love right here? Where was I looking for love? Because I promise you, 100%, you will find it. The last thing I want to talk about is um, light. Now, usually when I speak about being, you are the light, you have light, people with a Christ consciousness illumine the world. And, I, you know, I have banked on that. There have been dark, dark times in my life where I have had to look for the light of someone who has gone through what I was going through and follow them. So those of us who are going through things, especially those of us who are going through addictions, we have to get relight our light 
and then we have to shine it back so others can find their way. But that's not what I want to talk about today. It's important. <laughs> it's for another day. I want to talk about a different kind of light. I want to talk about lightening up. See, I want us to use this holiday to lighten up. We take everything so seriously. You know, a slight, we over-exaggerate it, and we take it so seriously. Sometimes even our spiritual practices, we, I have friends who meditate four hours a day. Oh, they're not happy. They're not any happier than I am, you know. Sometimes it's important to just go to a movie. Sometimes it's important to just, you know, find some friends and go play cards. Sometimes it's important to just tell an off-color joke. Just, I'm not going to do it, no. <laughs> but it is important to lighten up during this holiday season. Try not to take ourselves quite as seriously as we sometimes do. The Christ consciousness is alive in you. If you could stand where I am right now and see how powerful each and every one of you are, you would understand that the power of Jesus is right in your heart, right in your mind, and right in your soul. Let's take this message into prayer, knowing that there's only one power, and it's the power of the Most High God running through me all of the time, around me, all of the time, above and below me all of the time. There is no place where this power of, of love and harmony and generosity and peace is not running through me. So I simply turn my attention to it, knowing that whatever I turn my attention to, God simply says, yes. So I turn my attention to the outcomes and the demonstrations of that which is in me, kindness, joy, humor, laughter sharing. I give thanks. I release this word into the law and together we say, and so it is.